it is naive to think that after we're through this, that we can safely think that we're gonna wait 102 years for the next pandemic. So 102 years ago, we had the Spanish flu and it was much more serious than what we're going through in terms of uh, death rate. So I consider what we're going through and I certainly hope our policymakers will also have this view. I consider this a fire drill. The next one is not gonna be 100 years away. It could be much closer. And indeed, we've had scares with SARS, with MERS, and, and other um, biological issues. So it is crucial that we learn from this episode. We don't brush it away and say, well, that's for the next generation or the generation after that, we're done. No, the next pandemic could be much more serious and it could be sooner rather than later. So what does this mean? Well, I certainly hope that our policymakers learn from the catastrophic failure that we've seen in public health response that we need a system that's ready to deploy very quickly in terms of widespread testing. That's gotta be ready to go immediately. The other thing is that we were able to map the DNA of the COVID-19 in two weeks. Why do we have to wait a year and a half for a vaccine? Well, traditionally, that's the time that that actually takes but surely we can do better. And that means an investment in research and development. So I think that it is crucial that some funding is directed towards what I call kind of global risk management. And that means that we have the technologies in place whereby we can map the DNA quickly of a virus and then quickly move to a vaccine situation. There's obviously other things that are crucial in terms of the public health response that we have basically not invested in this over the long term because we haven't seen the threat. This is uh, what I call a systemic risk. It is a risk that's very difficult uh, to hedge, but there's certain things you can do. And we should take this episode as the fire drill and make sure that we're in a better position in the future. We've seen the economic carnage and it is very significant. We've seen the tragic loss of life. We've seen people that don't have the disease thrown out of a job that the damage is, is very important to them also in terms of their, uh, their family life, their personal mental uh, well-being, And that's really hard to quantify. We can count people that are out of work, but it's really difficult to count the social and personal damage of this. So we need a new policy, a national health policy that will put us in a far better position in the future when this happens again, and it will happen again.